Hey, everyone. We're live at the Pace Studios in New York right now with Pete Yorn. Pete, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and right. joining today, Jackson Phillips. Dude, thanks for being here. We appreciate both of your time. Yeah. Thanks for coming and bringing the, the music here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, uh, so we're going to hear three songs off of Caretakers. Uh, the, the album is out in the world right now, so congratulations on that. And it is, if I'm not mistaken, the first release on your label, on Shelly Music. That's right. So yeah. well done, everybody. That's awesome. Uh, can you tell us what's coming up first today? Yeah, we're going to play uh, the first song from the record. It's called Calm Down. Right. Yeah, I'll check it out. All right. you guys um can we talk a little bit about can you tell us how this uh how the relationship started how the collaboration came to be and then and what it was like working together uh on this record absolutely you want to tell them uh sure tell? Right. <laughs> um yeah so i was at a birthday party in la that my manager had taken me to and uh yeah that's where i met pete it was kind of like late in the night and uh yeah, you know, I feel like the party was kind of winding down at that point. And Seems then, to be when the best meetings take place. Yeah, and uh, 
Yeah, we were just like, is that Pete Yorn over there? And then we went and talked to you. I don't really remember exactly what happened, but it was, you know. Yeah, you know. I think Britton came over first and then introduced us. And uh, Jackson had been on my radar, like his band Day Wave. Um, they, were, they had put out a record on Harvest Records. And I had a side band called The Ohms on Harvest Records. So I was following them on Instagram. And so their social media like helped out. And uh, I would always see on the Harvest Records feed, like, Day Wave, Day Wave. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I like it. It was kind of like jangle pop, the kind of stuff that I like. Uh, this, like reminded me of stuff that I loved in college, you know. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I'm at this party, and there he is. It's like, that's the guy. That's Day Wave. And so we met, and he has a studio out in, uh, in uh, Hollywood. And he invited me there. I remember, I think that night, like, maybe we should record something, or, or maybe Britain said it. I don't even know. But, uh, you know, it wasn't until, like, three months later we finally got it together. And uh, I went over to his house, and we talked for a little bit, and we just had a good vibe. And uh, we decided that maybe we should try and make an EP of music for fun, like five songs, and see where that led. And I think the next time I went over there, a few days later, we just tracked a song, and uh, it just felt good. It felt, like, you know, super... Super kind of natural, easy and fun. Yeah. yeah, and so all of a sudden we had like twenty five songs. We were like we went way past the EP thing, and uh, we we're like, well, we want to do another one. Like every day we would pretty much have another song recorded. And at first it was some songs that I had kind of written, but then after like three or four, we just started writing songs together in the studio every day. And he'd come up with these beautiful soundscapes, and they'd inspire me. And I had a lot of stuff going on, I think, in my head that I wanted to get out lyrically. So does it seem as though what's out in the world right now is Caretakers Volume 1 and Caretakers Volume 2 might be forthcoming potentially from that prolific uh, series of sessions that sounds like it's probably still going on? I think so. It's like, yeah, we're still, you know, we're still, you know, working together. I always say, as long as Jackson will have me over, I'll keep, you know, going by. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a lot more songs that are on this record, so I feel like this is just the first installment, you know. So. Cool. Well, awesome. I'm glad that you guys had that experience. It sounds like as organic of a thing as it possibly could have been. And uh, that's that's great, dude. It sounds like a gift from the universe, which is is uh, not always the way it happens, but that's great. Yeah, a lot of weird things kind of just aligned. And just when like, looking back, it was like, wow, it's weird that that happened. Or, you know, things came together. Uh, that It was funny because three days before I went to his house, I remember sitting, I was telling someone very close to me that I wasn't, you know, they were like, when are we going to get some new music from you, Pete? And I was like, I don't know, it's not really on my radar right now, I'm just kind of not focused on music. And three days later, I go to his house, and we just kind of like, just hit it, it's happened. Cool, cool, man. Well, thank you guys for coming and sharing the music with us today. Uh, we're going to hear a second and a third song off of Caretakers. Can you tell us what you're doing second? Yeah, um... I'm feeling like we're just going to play like the first three songs from the record in order, like a little preview of it. So this song's called I Want to Be the One. Um, and, uh, you know, I remember when I first, you know, I got a little girl at home. Um, it's my first time being a dad. She's already going to be four. But I remember when we had her, everyone was like, has it changed your songwriting? Or, you know, how is it affecting you? And it was so early. I was like, I, I have no idea how it would. But I feel like of all the songs, this was one where she might have creeped into it a little bit. Like something about want to rise to the occasion of being being able to be there for her and be the best dad I can be and it's definitely in 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 the lyrics I hear it so I just yeah. love to hear it all right
face will know how Tell me where you're going, I'll be there now It's always up to you oh. I wanna be the one to watch you Dreams we made it. A picture that was only faded. Can't think of anything else I ever wanted to do. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, thank you. Um, can we talk about? Uh, I don't know, you got some chance to poke around the tapes a little bit, the King Biscuit stuff, the Bill Graham stuff. I mean, this room is just such an easy place to talk about uh, musical influences. Can we talk a little bit about some of the artists that you, Pete, and you, Jackson, sort of bonded over and really agreed on and, and like found a found a common language over? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think from like the moment we started working together, we were like sharing music with each other a bunch. And the first time you came over, we just listened to music. I don't think we even made anything. Yeah, we were listening to music. Um, but yeah, I, what did we listen to? A lot of Guided by Voices. But I had showed you Alex G. And uh, you were like, oh, this kind of reminds me of Guided by Voices. And I had never really listened to Guided by Voices for some reason. I think I was like, I knew about them, but like there was so much music that I was like, I didn't know where to start. And you yeah. were like, no, 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 these are the ones you want to listen to, Alien Lanes and B-1000. And then, yeah, so that we got, we listened to that a lot. Yeah, he was turning me on to some stuff that I hadn't heard. Like you said, like Sandy, Alex G. Or is it Alex G. Sandy? Sandy, Sandy Alex, Alex G. G. Sandy. Yeah. I never heard. He's awesome. Yeah. And uh, and I heard some. I heard a little GBV in some of it. Uh, but he has such great melodies. And uh, we definitely did a deep dive on that. I remember you played me. What do you? Sh you showed me Claro. I remember you showed me that video of her in her bedroom. Uh, Pretty girl. What's that song called? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just cool to see uh, something getting popular that didn't sound like so produced it was like really homemade and i was like wow it's cool that people are checking stuff like that out you know it seemed really innocent then i found out she went to syracuse which was cool because i went to syracuse um but then what else were we listening to i don't know like uh you know you showed me that replacement song uh oh unsatisfied, unsatisfied yeah. and now it's like my favorite song oh good i listen to it all the time yeah it's a good song um we mostly worked though we kind of just hit it you know we were like i'd get there in the morning or maybe like 11 o'clock, 10, 30, 11, and we got into a routine where, you know, if I had an idea, we'd start working it up, or sometimes we would start from scratch, like lay down a bass line or some drums or something like that, and then we would just take a few steps, we'd build, lay a track, lay another track, and then we'd always get to the point where it was like 1.30, and it was like, okay, we're going to go to this place called Lassen's, it's like this like health food supermarket in Hollywood, and we'd go to Lassen's every day and we'd get some food. And then, I mean, there were, there'd be times when, when, uh, 
before lessons where I'd be like, oh, I wonder if we're going to actually get a song today. I, I, don't, I don't know. This one's not really happening. And every time we would come back after food, the thing would just like, boom, boom. Like it would just kind of catch fire. And uh, we'd, we'd hit our stride and we'd be done with it by like six o'clock at night. And then I'd, I'd be able to go home. And I always wanted to be home to, to, to be able to put the kid to bed and sure. be there for that. And so it worked out. Um, Nice. So this album potentially brought to you by the universe first for bringing you guys yeah. together and then Green Juice and Sprouts from Lassen's. Yeah. Yeah. Is what, what we didn't eat that healthy at Lassen's. I think it's <laughs> just taking a break in the middle of making a song, especially when you're like making a song in a day, because like each song we never really spent more than a day on. Yeah, it wasn't a rule, but it's just kind of the way it always happened. And then once we did it so many times, it kind of became like a challenge. And you realize like you're just losing perspective until you take a break and then you come back and you're like, oh, I see what, you know, yeah. what to do now. Instead was, of like pushing it too hard, it's yeah. like, okay, let's just step out, go do something and come back. Was that a new way to work for both of you guys? Or do you habitually make sure that you program a break into your day so that well, your brain has a I feel like I do that more now. But when I was first like making all my music by myself... Like the day wave stuff, I was I never took breaks. I would just like, um, yeah, I would just like keep going because I never had anyone like to tell me like I'm let's go get some food. I would just like forget about that and just keep going. But yeah, I think taking a break is really it's the way to go. Yeah, even if you don't, even the part of you didn't really want to like you wanted to keep pushing it, see if you can get it. But like it's like okay, we're just gonna delay gratification for a second, step out, and every time we came back, it really it really proved. Uh, worthwhile so cool cool man well yeah the so caretakers is the the sum of a number of excellent decisions on both of your guys parts so thank you for <laughs> again bringing it uh to us um if you the internet are just joining us right now caretakers is out right now on pete on your label on uh, on shelly music and we're gonna hear a third song from it today can you tell us what's coming up last yeah this is uh track three on caretakers i think it's called uh can't stop you and just a little bit about it, it's, it's kind of, I feel like everybody has toxic people in their lives and you always be like, you know, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut that person out of my life because it's just too hard, you know? But sometimes I find you're stuck with maybe a toxic person in your life. They're too, they're too uh, intertwined with your whole being. And so you can't really lose them. So you got to figure out how to maybe change, change your way of thinking about that person and, and learn how to kind of, kind of accept who they are. And so... I think this song is, touches on that. So, all right. One, two, three, four.
Thank you. Thank you for the, the clear endings. It's obvious. We, I know when to clap. <laughs> and um, I enjoyed this very much. Dude, thanks for coming by. Pete, we appreciate it. Jackson, thanks for doing this. Um, and Pete, you are out on the road starting. Uh, the, the, October, the solo acoustic dates start um, on October 9th at the Constellation Room in Santa Ana. Um, there are a number of dates. All of them are up at PeteYorn.com. Sweetwater in Mill Valley is going to be a ton of fun. That's on October That's 13th. Right. It's a beautiful yeah. building. That's the town I'm from. Yeah, he's from there. Really? Yeah. Dude, I went to school in Marin. Really? Yeah, Where? I did. I went to Branson for like six months uh, and they kicked me out. Well, no, yeah, Branson, that's an intense school. <laughs> yeah. I regret nothing about being kicked out from there, but that's nearby Mill Valley. Beautiful place. That's where, dude, these t- the Bill Graham archive, a lot of that's from, uh, uh, it was stored in Mill Valley for quite a long time. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, the tour, the solo acoustic tour wraps uh, at the Hawthorne Theater in Portland on October 19th. All the dates again are up at PeteYorn.com. Um, Thank you for doing this, man. Best of luck on Caretakers. It's out in the world right now. And uh, thanks, guys. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thank you.